are right outside the garden of the famous gardener, Bobby Joe Ellis. <laughs> Thanks for being with us today. <laughs> and you, you know what? One of my favorite things to eat at any given time of the year is sauerkraut. Okay. And you were telling me about the whole process. Now, different people do it different ways. Some people used to put it in these big vats and let it bubble and boil. In the big, used to put it in the big crock. Right. But we don't do that anymore. But our ancestors did. Right. Yeah. You've got it down to a simple science. And first of all, you got to grow it. Yeah. In Bob and Joe's garden, it looks mighty good. That's mighty good-looking cabbage. Now tell us, uh, step us through the process, if you will. I see you got a food processor here. Yes. And we cut the we'll cut this up into smaller pieces to, before it will go through the processor. You know, in the old days, there, we, didn't have, we didn't have refrigeration like we did. People right. looked for ways to, to store their vegetables, and this was one way you could put cabbage up and have it year round. Right, exactly. Without right. having to worry about refrigeration. And, so you use everything but the, but the core of that, yeah, every bit of it. And a lot of people cut the core out and put it on the inside of that. And really? the, the children will hunt for that when they get ready to eat crowd. No kidding. Yeah, right, <laughs> exactly right. So we got a we got a nice size bowl. How much will that make? A couple of jars? Uh, about I say four. Four jars. Yeah. Now in your garden that we saw here, you have a row of cabbage. Right. Now you will, will you plant lake cabbage too? Yeah. I'll plant uh, fall cabbage and uh, broccoli and cauliflower. Gotcha. So we take this inside now, and we figure out where we pack that into jars. Right. And that's up to Lois. Uh, you got that right. That's that's all hard. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll hand that to you, and let's go inside and see what Lois is going to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Lois Ellis, we have graduated to the kitchen. <laughs> We've come from outside. He keeps all the mess out there, which I'm... I'm sure you I appreciate. Yeah, I appreciate absolutely. that. He does that when he's making tomato juice or whatever. He does. He leaves a mess out there, and that's how you all have been successfully married for as long as you have. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe so. That's part of the reason. <laughs> that's part of the reason. Now, I like to see families working together, and you know, part A is out here, part B, C, D, E to Z is in here. Mm -hmm. Now, we're obviously making kraut. Mm -hmm. now, in the old days, people used to use crocs and all. You don't have to do that nowadays. You've got your ways figured out. But one thing I'm curious about is I was talking to your husband and son and they were talking about the signs. Mm -hmm. Now there's calendars where you can look at these signs and there's uh, almanacs, farmer's almanacs, things like that. That's correct. What are the signs uh, when it has to do with, with, with this? What do you want to do when you're making your sauerkraut? You want to make sauerkraut when the signs are uh, in the light of the moon and not below the heart. Any sign from the top of the head to the heart is fine. And your kraut will stay white and crisp if you do that. And when you get below that, uh, it will get soft and turn color, kind of brownish. Without fail, every time. It, it always has for us. What's, what, is this gonna be a little darker because of the signs, this particular batch of kraut? Yes, last week, I think uh, about uh, the 14th was the last day that it was in the heart, and it went below the heart, the 15th. You got your jars sterilized. Yes, I have. Caps mm -hmm. and lids, everything's ready to go. Now what do we do? Okay, we're going to put a teaspoon of canning salt in the bottom of every jar, and that's our preservative. And that's your preservative, and you're just going to pack that as full as you can possibly get it. As full as I can possibly get it, and we like to put uh, some of the stalk in there. The children like to find pieces of the stalk in there. Do they get a prize? <laughs> well, they think that's the prize. <laughs> They've all, all our children have always enjoyed that, and now the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren enjoy that. Now, with this kraut, it has to kind of ferment a little bit. So mm -hmm. you're gonna get a little smell, you're gonna get something just a little bit different. Tell us the process, and once you pour your hot boiling water in, what happens after that? Okay, uh, then you seal it, and, mm -hmm. and you, you put it somewhere in a dark place. Uh, we have put it under the house, and we, we put ours now out in the garage in cabinets that's real dark. 
And I'm putting that knife down in there. That'll give me some more room for my boiling, boiling water. Boiling water that I'm going to pour over it right, right now. And I'll pour water just all the way up to the top. Right. Now, in the process, while it's tucked away in the dark somewhere, um, some of this water will boil out. Mm -hmm. So do you need to put something underneath it that'll catch that water? Uh-huh, it'd be good if you set it on um, paper or something like that because a little of the water will come out. And, and you've got just a little bit of, of dark right on the top. It's good, but it's not pretty. As, this, uh, as you put this in, in a dark place, temperature-wise, can it be hot, cold, whatever? Does it matter temperature-wise? or Somewhere where it won't freeze. Gotcha. So temperature, if it gets hot out in your garage or wherever, that's fine. Uh-huh. And that allows some of that fermentation. Now, it's not going to seal, right? Well, it may seal in the beginning, but once that seal breaks loose, that's no problem, correct? That's right. That's no problem. Uh, when you get it this winter, your, uh, your lid will be loose, probably. Uh, and you'll think, oh, is that good or not, if you haven't done this before, but it will always be good. Now, I would imagine that your jars don't last too long because it's so good. So, <laughs> last, I mean, last year's is pretty much going to be gone shortly, or do you have some left from last year? Uh, we have 12 jars. 12 jars. That, that's, uh, no, no, I'm giving you one, so now mm -hmm. we have 11. Now, how long can that last? Usually, I mean, if I'm making sauerkraut, I'm going to eat it all the first season. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll have my, is that kind of the way you plan it, to have all of it eaten by the next year? That's right. So you wouldn't want to keep it two or three years, you think, probably that first year? No, no, I wouldn't want to keep it any more than two years. Gotcha. So that is so simple. And Lois, I like simple. Oh, well, we do too. Because I'm a simple man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's run through it one more time. Okay. Grow your cabbage. Even if you don't have your cabbage, Go to the farmer's market, or so you can do this yourself. We have done that. Yeah. We have done that. We so know, done and it's nice to know where you get it sometimes. Mm -hmm. If your neighbors raise it, maybe trade some tomatoes or however that works. Bring in your cabbage, get outside, mm -hmm. put it through the food processor, mm -hmm. get it like that, bring it in, have your, your jars are already sealed. Uh -huh. Tell us again from that point on. Okay, the jars, uh, you have them sterilized, sterilized and ready, and your water boiling. You put the teaspoon of salt in Canning the jar. Salt. Canning salt. Uh huh, and uh, and then you tamp the jar just as tight as you possibly can, and put the boiling water over that, and seal it, and put it somewhere for it to work. Where you don't mind smelling it. That's bit. right. <laughs> That's right, and in a dark place. In a dark place. Uh huh. Now we're going to talk more about these signs because I find that fascinating, and it's a very involved process. And uh, uh, your son Matt has a, a calendar from Big Three Tractor, mm -hmm. and they print this, and the signs are on them. Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. ways and places to find these things, and you have put me on a mission now to find out more about this. So that's a, that will be an upcoming segment. You can't go wrong with that. Oh yeah. I mean, signs are biblical. Yes. And and you can't go wrong with that. Well, I'll tell you what, I appreciate the tip on that, and we'll get to going on that. And how do you like to fix your sauerkraut when you have it? Oh, we like to uh, fix it with Polish sausage. We like it with pinto beans and cornbread. Mm -hmm. Quick and easy country recipe, right out of the garden. New potatoes just dug up and cabbage. Now, mm -hmm. not all your cabbage goes towards sour sauerkraut. What is this wonderful smelling dish right here? Uh, that's cabbage cooked in the oven, and that makes it easy. Yeah. And uh, it, it just has salt, pepper, and a little squeezed margarine over it. Now, what temperature do you cook it and how long? 350, and I cook it for at least an hour, sometimes an hour and a half. Covered, uncovered? Covered. Gotcha. My husband likes it crunchy, and, and we, we have to, you know, kind of test it. Test it every now and then and see how it is. So just cabbage and potatoes, do you put anything in there juice-wise? Uh, no. No water, no nothing? No. Can I have some of that, Lord? You sure can. Did I'd love for you to try. Now we'll try. Yeah, all this came out of the garden this morning. What a good side to any dinner. Uh-huh. It is great side. In my case, lunch. <laughs> in your case, lunch. Early yeah, lunch. All right, I'm going to try that. <laughs> I already know I like it because I can smell it. That's fresh out of Bob Joe's garden. Lois? simple but magic. Very simple. I can eat that whole pan. <laughs> well, you're welcome to it. Mm -mm -mm. Get your cabbage and potatoes right out of the garden, farmer's market, cook this up for any side. I think I can make a meal out of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lois. You're so welcome. <laughs>